As we continue to look at what will be the next phase of Canada's pandemic response, today is the day, in fact, that they are shipping the first supply, the first 6,000 doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, shipping today from the company's plant in Belgium and arriving here on Monday, and then shots beginning in Ontario, anyway, as early as Tuesday. It is up to every province and territory to decide how to distribute them, and each has uh, its own approach. But officials across this country do seem to agree on one thing, and that is that COVID-19 vaccines and inoculation will not be mandatory. Alberta's government will not make any mandatory vaccination. Some think that this is controversial, but we don't live in a country where a government can inject you with something against your will. So we have no mandatory immunization programs in this country and in this province, and we do not expect um, that COVID immunization will be mandatory either. Constitutionally, I couldn't, and no one could make it mandatory, but uh, I just encourage people to go out there and, and take the vaccine. It's, it's so important. That's Ontario Premier Doug Ford. Again, another jurisdiction not mandating vaccines, but the province is considering requiring proof of vaccination for certain activities. And people have been wondering if that might apply to their job as well. So we have received many questions about vaccines, but also vaccines and the workplace. So this morning, we welcome Catherine Marshall, who is an employment lawyer in Toronto, here to answer some of the questions. There are many about this area of law. Catherine, thank you for being with me today. Welcome. Thanks for having me. You were listening there. It doesn't sound like governments are going to be making vaccination mandatory. So the basic question, can employers make vaccination mandatory? In some cases, I think they can get away with it. Um, I think if an employer is running like a high risk environment, like a care home, and there's a legitimate basis to make it mandatory in order to protect um, the people that, uh, you know, either live or work in that environment, then I think they can. Um, because at the end of the day, employers have a duty to preserve a health healthy and safe work environment and that's actually a statutory duty under the occupational health and safety act so a lot of employers are going to be doing what they need to do to ensure that their work environment is safe asking a lot of questions i'm sure to get ready for all of this so you said long-term care homes what what are the other sectors that you think would be areas where there could be some sort of mandatory component I think any sector where there's at-risk people, like a hospital, um, I think daycares, because a lot of parents are going to be very, you know, concerned about their, their children. Because I understand the vaccine is not being recommended for people under 18, so I can see, like, daycare workers being uh, mandated to do it. But, um, you know, and, and probably, like, some, some really public-facing, like, retail environments where there's just a lot of traffic. Um, but I think, you know, your typical office... Um, where they're able to bring in like physical distancing policies and, you know, sanitize things and keep it safe. I don't see how they can, you know, justifiably make it mandatory. Um, and uh, I think a lot of employers are going to be hesitant to do so because, of course, there's like charter arguments and then there's people who just can't get the vaccine because they, they have health issues or there's religious reasons. And, um, you know, it's going to be a really tough area to navigate. And a whole new area of law. You're right. And I'll get to the charter in just a second. But since you mentioned uh, people looking for exemptions, what are the employees' rights and, I would say, obligations, some who might be looking for a accommodation in all of this? You know, uh, uh, you know, the employee has to follow their employer's policies um, if they're, you know, uh, to a reasonable extent. Like, um, you know, if the employer is saying, you know, if you're sick, don't come in. If you've been exposed, don't come in. If you do come in, wear a mask. Like, that's all, all legitimate. If your employer is coming to you and saying, you have got to take this vaccine, and for whatever reason you don't want to take it, you do have a right as an employee to, to say no to that. And um, my view is that if your employer turns around and fires you as a result, you probably have a pretty strong wrongful termination case on your hands. And um, you know, under the, the Human Rights Code in Ontario, and I know every province has a similar one, um, 
you know, people have a right to not be discriminated against due to their religion or their or their abilities or their, you know, if they've got illness or anything. And for some people, there are legitimate reasons why they don't want to take the vaccine and they would have rights under the, you know, human rights code that their employer has to preserve. So, so we might anticipate tribunals scary. being being hearing uh, this kind of issue on the human rights front. I want to bring in uh, yeah. Kathy Cardill's question because not just human rights tribunals. She's wondering, are there any charter violations anticipated with the requirement? Um, this is not this has to do with vaccination cards. So we'll turn to that in just a second. Charter violence uh, violations anticipated with the requirement that we show proof of receiving the vaccine. So what do you think in terms of whether there will be all court challenges and and uh, the Charter of Rights invoked here? I think there's going to be a ton of court challenges. The scenario that I see is that if people have to show like a proof of vaccination card in order to access um, like public services and government services, um, then to me that would be a charter potential charter violation, especially if that person has a legitimate reason to have not gotten the vaccine because you know, if criteria is being imposed by the government that you can only go a certain place or access certain things or, you know, go to a hospital if you have that vaccine and you have that proof, then um, I do see that as being a potential rights violation. Look, there's going to be a ton of litigation um, and, and uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of different activist mm-hmm. groups that are going to be happy to bring some of this stuff to the courts just to create some precedent because there's a vacuum right now in precedent. We, there's basically no litigation about mandatory vaccinations. That's uh, so interesting. Hold, so I can't say what does the case law tell us because it's a whole new area and all of this. I have another question on, on these vaccine passports or vaccination immunization cards, as uh, Ontario is referring to it. That's the most direct information we've had has been so far from Ontario looking at bringing this in. Uh, in terms of what the law says about it. Douglas Smith wonders whether it's not something that needs to go beyond provincial here. Will Canada make proof of vaccination cards mandatory, if not the vaccine, but the proof of vaccination cards mandatory on a national level versus the provincial response? Well, I think uh, it's highly unlikely that the federal government's going to do anything like that because they're really just going to be downloading that responsibility to the provinces. Um, And I just I I think it's very unlikely that vaccinations are going to be mandatory for the covid vaccine. Um, I think that's pretty obvious listening to all the, the premiers. And it's interesting because. I, you know, all these premiers are, are thinking like, well, I don't want to be the first one to get a court challenge, right? So it's like they're waiting to see what the other ones do. And, you know, if there is one one of the provinces that decides to make it mandatory, I mean, there will definitely be some kind of court challenge. And then maybe, maybe other provinces will just sort of wait and see what the results are of that. But, um, you know, things like the flu vaccine, um, other types of vaccines for... Um, transmittable diseases are not mandatory. They've never been mandatory. Um, So, you know, this this is just totally uncharted territory. But at the same time, you know, COVID-19 has completely disrupted every single faction of life. So I think we can anticipate that there's going to be a lot of employers who are going to try to impose some kinds of measures. And one of the ones I was thinking about is I think a lot of employers are going to say to people, the vaccine is not mandatory, but if you haven't received the vaccine, you need to work from home. Oh. And um, I think that's probably a reasonable a request. Okay. I don't think an employee would be able to make a claim of constructive dismissal or anything. Um, because I, given the situation we're in right now, I think that is reasonable. And the employer has to protect the people that are coming into the office. Here's a reasonable expectation. You're going to have a very interesting 2021, I think. Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to keep in touch with you, Catherine. Absolutely. Thank you for setting that up. Thank you for your great questions on this point, but also, Catherine, for sharing your expertise. And we will be speaking again with uh, with this as we work our way through yet another uncharted area here from COVID. Thanks, Catherine Marshall. 